Hello, how you guys doing? Thank you so much for watching. Question comes, are angels real? Are angels real? Hmm. Well, if you want to find out, you got to watch this, the awesome message. All right, guys. Well, I want to give you a little brief introduction of this message right here because here's the thing. The topic is going to be, are angels real? Angels of God versus angels of Satan. We got to know which is which, you know? But let's go to this intro right here in Revelations chapter 12, beginning verses 7 through 9. And we're going to take a look at... Uh, scripture about how angels came into be, you know, who are angels, what are angels, so to speak, you know. So, Revelations chapter 12, verses 7 to 9 says, Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was not strong enough, and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Wow. So we see here that you got in heaven, there was war. You got Michael and his angels. Of course, these are uh, great angels. These are God's angels. They were in war with Satan and his angels. It's crazy, you know, and because they try to overpower God and his angels, they lost their place in heaven. God sent them down. If you want to know more about that, I got videos for that. But anyway, the key thing here, guys, is verses 9. And so verse 9, we see here Satan angels, right? Who is Satan angels? Hmm? Who the heck is Satan angels? Like, this is just really crazy because we all know about the devil. We know about God. We know about Satan. But very rarely you hear about Satan's angels, you know. But the scripture does says there was war in heaven with Michael and his angels and Satan and his angels. Well, let's take a look at verses, verses 4. In verse 4, we're going to get an idea of who Satan's angels is. So just scroll up. Just go up a little bit. Read Revelation 12, verses 4. It says here, Its tail, who's its tail? The dragon. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to the earth. Wow. Stars of the sky. Who are these stars? Hmm? Who are these stars? All right. Well, let's take a look at Revelation chapter 1, verses 20. So we need to know who are these stars. Are these stars angels? Because you know, Revelation is a book of like symbolic, everything's it's like clues and stuff, you know, metaphors, and you just gotta know how to figure it out, you know. But scripture is gonna help us figure that out, right? Revelation chapter 1, verse 20 says, The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden stem. The mystery of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and of the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. So we see here that stars represent angels. So now we can get an idea that, wow, so there was a third of heaven a third of, out of all the angels in heaven, a third of them went with Satan to the earth. In other words, they lost their place in heaven. So now what we're going to do is we're going to break down the angels of God. Because now we see here there's the angels of God. But then we see here there's angels of the devil. In other words, Satan. 
So let's take a look at Exodus chapter 23, verses 20. We're going to take a look at the good angel. Cool. Exodus 23, verses 20. It says here, See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. So what's amazing about this is God's angels guards you. And it brings you to places that God has prepared. So I got a little video. Now this video is pretty cool. Um, is it real? Amen. But it sure does look like it. But the key thing is you're going to see how an angel saves a boy from a car accident. You know. And um, but the principle behind this video is actually what the angels really does. The angels does saves and it guards God's people, you know. So take a look at this quick video clip. Wow, that is an incredible video, huh? Like, it's crazy. Now, how many times God saves you? How many times where there is times in your life where you shouldn't have been dead? Or you shouldn't have been in a car accident or any type of accident? Or bad things shouldn't happen to you, but it didn't happen. Why is that? Because God's angels was with you. So that's what God angel does. It protects you. If you're a Christian or a disciple today, and you've been to a series of experiences in the past where bad things shouldn't have happened, but then an angel was there pretty much that it feels like it, and you got spared, it's because God had a plan for your life. He's not done with you. He had vision. He had a plan for your life, and he's going to save you, although you might not belong to him, but in the future, you will. Sometimes that's how God works, you know, that's how the angels work, you know, it's amazing, you know. So, um, one thing about my life, guys, I want to show you some examples about how God's angels saved me, you know, many times. Well, one of the example is potential accidents. I mean, I can tell you how many times that I couldn't have got into a car accident, even riding my scooter, where, where like, I shouldn't have got crashed, but I did it. God's angels spared me, you know? I remember I was in my scooter and literally for some reason, I fell out of my scooter in the middle of the street and cars is coming and it didn't hit me. <laughs> like literally, like the car was like, like feet away and it just did not hit me. <laughs> Man, oh man, God's angels is with me, you know. There was with me, you know. Now, here's another incident how God's angel saved me, you know. About three months ago, early August, I had a fire in my apartment, unfortunately. You know, it was my stupidity trying to um, remove the battery out of my electric scooter. And I did it in a way that I shouldn't have done it with a screwdriver from the side and plunged it by accident and it started to sparkle up and next you know fire start coming out and literally the whole fire 
it was all the way to my ceiling. Like it was going all the way up to my ceiling and I had no shirt on. That fire literally touched me and it did not done anything to me. And my whole apartment was gray, just straight up filled with smoke. It was great. You can't see anything. It's straight up gray. I thank God for my heavy sprinklers in my apartment. It just, psh, I opened the windows. I find a way to get on the hallway and I had no ill effects. But anyway, um, here's another thing about the angels. One thing that what the angels do, the angels actually put you in places where you could run into disciples into Christians, into messengers of God. You got a scripture like Acts chapter 8, verses 26 to 39, about the Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. You know, so you got this fired up eunuch, wants to get closer to God, trying to seek after God, but didn't know the word. So God knows his heart and what he has been doing. So what he ended up doing is setting Philip, which... He is a disciple, a messenger of Christ, and he also has the Holy Spirit. And then you got eunuch, he don't have the Holy Spirit, but because he's seeking after God, God's angel put the eunuch and fill up together. So that's kind of like how the angels and the Holy Spirit work. They work together to bring people to the Lord. So if you're here, if you're a disciple today, the angel of the Lord put you into a place that he has prepared for you to meet disciples. It's incredible. That's how angels work, you know. Now, I want you to see Satan's angels at work. How the Satan angels works. You know, it's, it's no different than like how Satan leads people astray. But I want you to see this video. Now, how many times, guys, where, you know, you, you, you know, with the parents, they ground their teenagers, you're grounded, then they escape out of the window, then later on, bad things happen. So what the angels of Satan does, try to put you into the place where bad things can happen to you. Like, it's it, the conscious, it's ringing a bell and you ignoring your conscience, and then bad things end up happening to you. And that's what Satan even does. But look at this video. Check this video. Hi, welcome to Film Recapped. Today I bring everyone a sensational movie inspired by a true story. Hounds of Love. The main character of the story is a 17-year-old high school student. Her name is Vicky. After her parents divorced, she always lived with her father. According to agreements, Vicky had to go to his mother's house every week for two days. Compared to his father's gentle personality, his mother sternly makes Vicky very opposed every time he comes. Today is the weekend Vicky wants to go out to join a party of classmates. But quite far recently, the disappearance of the girl's disappearance happened consecutively. Mother is not assured, so she disagrees. But Vicky did not like her mother and was in a period of rebellion. At midnight, she put on makeup sneaked out, but she didn't know the moment almost buried her whole life. Vicky played at the party until very late. It was not over until dawn. But on the way home, she couldn't get the car. At this moment, a couple appeared on the road. The man was John the woman was Evelyn. They are kind taking Vicky for a while. At first Vicky was very hesitant, but could not stand the enthusiasm of John and his wife. Also, there are definitely no taxis now. So thinking for a while Vicky still accepted the invitation of John and his wife. On the way John said he had to go home to get some stuff. To keep safe. Vicky decided to wait outside. Evelyn stayed with her. While waiting the two women chatted about family matters. Vicky also gradually relaxed her guard. At this point, Evelyn invited Vicky into the house to have a drink. Seeing Evelyn so gentle. Vicky was completely off guard follow her into the house. The two of them tied Vicky to the bed. It turned out that the two are the culprits of the girl's disappearance case. Taking this chance Vicky jumped out of the window and Evelyn took out her knife. Originally that she would stop Vicky unexpectedly she didn't do any movements just left Vicky to leave. Vicky was walking while crying and chasing her mother's car on the road. Mom saw this scene through the rearview mirror. 
she got out of the car and hugged Vicky. In the end, this resilient girl was saved. The story here had... That's crazy, huh? This girl right here, she should have been home, but she snuck out of the window. Hey man, she had a little head bump with the moms, you know? I mean, who don't, you know? But she escapes out of the window and then she gets kidnapped. That's how Satan angels work. Put you in situations because of your disobedience, bad things end up happening to you. That's how Satan's angel works. And um, another example of how Satan's angels works too as well. Oh my God. Uh, is this movie called Blow. It's an old, it's an old movie, a classic um, with Johnny Depp. So in the last ending, he he told his daughter that we're gonna go to California. I promise, Ivan. And she says, "Swear to me. I swear to you. I just need to just give me one day, just one day. Meet me tomorrow. We're going to California. And it was a big time drug dealer." So what he was trying to do is do one more one more drug work. One more drug work. Because he wants to make that extra money to just solidify his life, pretty much. So that very last day that he wants to do one more drug work before he takes off to California with his daughter. And he promised his daughter he would be there. He gets busted with cops. And, and leave his daughter stranded. She had her suitcase and everything. And it's just like, it's sad. And he spends the rest of his life in jail. And that's what angels of Satan does. Put you into situations where you feel like, okay, let me just do this one more time. One more time. I know it's risky, but let me just flirt with this one more time. I got away with it so many different times. I got away with it many times. Let me just do this one more time. <laughs> that one more time may be your last time. That's how seeing angels work. Put you in bad situations in your life. In closing, we're gonna close out with Psalms 34 verses seven. And I'm gonna use the New Living Translations for this. Uh, the other was the NIV version. This is going to be the New Living Translation. It says here, For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. So if you want the angels of the Lord to be your guard, you have to fear the Lord. You have to be God-fearing. And what it means to fear the Lord in Proverbs, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. In other words, it's to hate sin. I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, perverse speech. That's what Proverbs talks about. That's what it means to fear the Lord. If you have that in your heart, you are God-fearing. The angels will be with you. And um, guys, there's nothing more greater than to have God's angels protecting you and to be with you. Especially when your life is in stake. How many times your life was in stake, guys? How many times my life was in stake and God's angels protect me and saves me and done the same thing for you? So anyway, hope you enjoyed this video, guys. I hope you learned a lot and get an idea about angels of God and angels of Satan. Question comes. Question is, which angels do you want? To be with you if you want God's angels to be with you challenge for you is fear the Lord if you don't fear the Lord if you don't fear right or wrong Satan's angels gonna be with you so have Satan's angels with you you don't need to fear anything but yourself you know so fear God so the angels could be with you amen on that please leave a like or comment, subscribe. I appreciate that because more videos will be coming. Amen. Love you. Take care.